There you go. Hey, everybody. Hello, Welcome guys. To the podcast. So much news going on, yes, man. Yes, but first, a moment of silence for the Xbox 360 marketplace. Is there a story for that? I mean, what's the story? It's just closed. Yeah, it's just closed. <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking of, like, a way to make that the, uh, the, the stream. I mean, like... But uh, really... We there, already did one. Yeah, we did. When they were talking about yes. closing it, I thought like you know at most we could do like little anecdotes about it. Like I actually, a friend of mine gave me his old 360 a while ago, and the weekend the store was closing, I actually finally reformatted it and set it up. I was like going through the store to see what was left and like so, what I can get. And don't stuff. we have an Xbox 360? We have one, but like that's at our parents' house, and a friend was getting rid of his 360. And rather than him throw it out, I saved it. Okay. <laughs> um, Why don't you save the one that's at a parent's house? Because I figured you'd want to save that one because that's the Star Wars one. I do like the Star Wars yeah. one. Eventually, I would like to have a little gallery of all yeah. this stuff here. Somewhere. Uh, I will note, though, the Xbox 360 um, user experience sucks. <laughs> so it's not Blades, right? It's not Blades anymore. It's like that Metro design that they tried to make happen. Yeah, you don't like that? No, I don't like it because I'm used to modern. The, well, the big problem is I log in. First of all, to reformat the, to reset it to factory settings, you have to specifically select to reformat the hard drive. That's in a different menu than the main system options. Uh, initialize doesn't reformat the hard drive. Initialize just like reboots it for some reason. Okay. Uh, so I finally learned how to reformat the hard drive. I log into my account. I had to change my password because apparently on the Xbox 360, your Microsoft password can't be more than 16 characters and mine was more than 16 characters. What? Yeah, so I had to change my password to something shorter. And then finally, I lo I'm no wonder they knock these things offline. <laughs> finally, I'm able to log in. I go to my games and my games list is empty because I don't have any games on the system. So I have to go to my account. I have to go down to uh, it's either purchases or downloads. And there is all of my games in reverse chronological order. And if I want to download them, I got to go one by one by one. You know one. what? You're explaining all this as if it's like a huge pain in the ass. The Switch is just like that. Oh, is it? Yeah, if you want to down re-download all your games, it is not easy. No. There is a place, like like you explained, yeah. there's a place where you can, do, with two check boxes, you can download the stuff that you but need. Like, but I, it's not obvious. But like on Xbox One and Series, and even PS4 and 5, if I go to my library, it'll just list all my yeah. games, regardless of whether or not they're on the hard drive. Yeah. This, I gotta like go through all these hoops and stuff. Yeah, the Switch is the same. Yeah. There, there, there is a section in like the eShop settings or something yeah. where it'll list out the stuff that you have, but it's not... It, it takes me a while to find it every time I need to find yeah. it. Yeah. Um, also, I find, I forgot about this. If you load a game on a, uh, if you load a game, a disc game, a physical game into the 360 and then you inject it, it forgets you <laughs> that game in your library. It just oh, yeah. removes it. Yeah. 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 That makes sense too. Oh. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Metro design mm. because I think that was designed at the time when Microsoft was working on having a sort of hybrid touchscreen interface mm -hmm. for Windows. Yeah. And as a touchscreen interface, I think that's not a bad solution. No, it was it was weird because it was good for a touchscreen interface. It wasn't bad for like a big screen interface, like a TV interface, but for regular ass personal computing. No, it's awful. Terrible. No, <laughs> like like at that what was that? Win Windows 8. Windows 8. So yeah. You would just immediately hit the start button when you yeah. when you turned the computer on to get rid of the Metro yeah. UI. So it was kind of like it, it's a weird in between between having a, a, a mouse and keyboard experience and a touchscreen experience, but we're still not there with hybrid touchscreen yeah. and mouse and keyboard interfaces. Yeah. So like that kind of solved problems that we still haven't figured out yet yeah so i, I want to give it credit for that but uh if you're on a mouse and keyboard it's trash yeah and if you're on a controller it's also trash it's less i would say it's less trash than a than a mouse and keyboard okay yeah no I, only because like the that. the icons are big so it makes it like yeah. navigating on a tv easy everyone likes the blades from, the blades were fun from xbox yeah. the blades were fun honestly Xbox Series is fine. Yeah, I'm fine with but, that. But like you know, the Xbox 360 definitely Microsoft's best system. 
some of my favorite gaming experiences were from that system i think that was i don't want to say that's where gaming peaked but like it's been like coasting since that generation i would say it was a pretty big leap yeah uh we always we should do an episode where we uh a tribute uh like every console generation had like a gimmick or so, or some sort yeah. of a uh, thing to attribute to it and we we go th we we know what all of them are mm -hmm. but we should list them out and define them yeah. but for the Xbox 360 generation it was the internet it was having like a like a good oh, stable yeah. online experience that was the big thing about the Xbox 360 marketplace was like it was the first time they really pushed downloading games like from the internet onto your uh, yeah. console. It started with little games like the Xbox Live Arcade, um, and then like slowly it transitioned to full retail games. Like you can download Mass Effect and the Halo games. That was on there. huge. Having uh, being able to download stuff off the marketplace. Yeah. That was a huge yeah. indie boom around that time. Yeah, uh, it's crazy because now everyone, all the indie games just go to steam yeah but at that time all the indie games wanted yeah. to be on xbox because they were trying to make it as easy as possible for yeah. people to and they did like that was the era like indie game the movie you know braid and super meat boy and fez yeah, they made like, a whole ass movie those it. games like got big from being on the xbox 360 marketplace and yeah. fun fact this is also a user experience uh problem with the xbox 360 marketplace Nowadays, it's all like lumped into one, but they had a specific section, one for Xbox Live Arcade and one for full retail games. So if I wanted X, uh, Perfect Dark was an Xbox Live Arcade game, but mm -hmm. I specifically go to Xbox Live Arcade, not the main game section, which was like your Call of Duties and your Gears of Wars. Yeah, that's dumb because it also diminishes uh, Xbox Live Arcade games. Yeah. It, it, it makes it seem like they're not they're real other, games. Yeah, they're, they've been othered essentially. Yeah. I mean, nowadays you have a different problem where all the games are lumped together and it's hard for indie games to get traction next yeah. to the big triple a games like back then that that was a great way to like highlight them like the summer of arcade was like now you it's, know, everyone looked forward to them it's really hard to highlight uh indie games yeah but you have a really good chance of succeeding like beyond mm -hmm. uh, uh normal thought because you are up against you are with the triple a games yes so a game like shovel knight is, yeah. is powerhouse and through yeah. everything um but it's up to the individual uh platform holders to to highlight the indie stuff like nintendo does it sometimes with their indie worlds they try to push some indie stuff mm -hmm. uh, xbox did too uh at the time every once in a while they would try to push some stuff playstation yeah. you know they, every once in a while they'll throw an indie game in for free on uh playstation uh plus premium or whatever yeah um but yeah, I, I would say allowing them to run with the big dogs and then highlighting the good ones is the way to go. Yep. So, so that, that's the Xbox that's 360. The Xbox 360. Rip Xbox 360. It, look, it still works. You can still download your old games. Uh, you can still play physical games on it. Um, you just can't play online or use the marketplace. That is if your Xbox 360 even works. Yes. Um, so which one did you get? Did you get the old one or the new? Yeah, it's the old one. It's like the original model, really? but you know, and it I, works. Yeah, I don't think it's a Jasper. It's I think it is a Jasper motherboard. Oh, the revision. Yeah. So he also gave me his Connect. I ain't fucking plugging that thing no, in. No, I don't do that. Um, yeah. Just a note. I looked up. We have 120 games for the Xbox 360 in our little doc. Is that the most? Still? I believe that's the most. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I gotta have more for Switch. I gotta. Probably. I gotta. I also down. like I want to do the thing in Excel where you like, you know, can do the pie chart of like how, how much on what. So Oh, I yeah. can I can set that up. Yeah. Uh yeah, Xbox 360, uh, that was when we had uh, our own jobs. Yeah. We could get our own games. And it was a pretty long generation. Yeah. And we bought a lot of games yeah. and played a lot of games. And like 360 games like on the used market are still like fairly inexpensive. Which is surprising because like now the system is like retro, but I guess because they're still modern enough and there were so many of them that like you can find games relatively cheap. There were a lot of games that are still being copied today, like Assassin's Creed and stuff. Assassin's Creed, Gears, uh, Halo. Uh, but there's also a lot of games that uh, weren't trying to be the same as other games. Yeah. Like Mirror's Edge mm -hmm. and uh, Vanquish, you know, like those yeah. types of games were doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So you get 
like like sometimes we like to trash older games for not having like a unified control scheme yeah. or being a little confusing because of the control scheme or whatever but sometimes because things aren't uh, uh industry standard everybody's trying their own you stuff get a out lot of you get a lot of really yeah. cool experimentation mm -hmm. yeah so uh go try some old games on 360 yeah a lot of those games you can get them on steam a lot of them are available there are i believe what is it 200 games that are lost uh to time now that the storefront closed mm -hmm. like you, you just can't play anymore on any system uh also they're working on getting 360 emulation uh, yeah uh, to, to, to work good i, know, I, like, I think it works pretty decent i think I, playstation 3 is a big problem playstation 3 is the bigger problem yeah because that has like a very specific proprietary architecture xbox 360 is a power pc based system yeah and that's like people can emulate that much easier all right speaking of old games uh main topic well let's well, let's yes. thank some people